Hello, friends. It's Kat from Yam Meow Kapow. Last week on the fly, I made a stylized portrait of a friend and used some inexpensive cotton watercolor paper from Meaden for the first time. While the only things I did with the paper were ink on it and test out basically just one layer of paint on it, my first impressions of it were hopeful. Even though this block is less than $15 US on Amazon, it claims to be 100% cotton watercolor paper at 300 GSM, which is a very sturdy, heavy weight for something you intend to pretty much drown in water. If you want to try it out for yourself, as always, I've linked all the materials used in this video down in the doobly-doo below. To be clear, I actually do believe that this paper is cotton because it just feels like it. There's absolutely a difference in tactile sensation between cellulose paper made of wood pulp and cotton paper made of, well, cotton. Just like how you can tell the difference between a Monopoly dollar bill and an actual government issued dollar bill by touch alone. Because my experience with this paper last week was a good one, I decided it would be worth it to actually use the paper for a slightly more involved painting, meaning I, of course, rocked out another doodle finder with this. The surface itself is heavily textured, and even though it's cold pressed, I'd actually say it's somewhere between a normal cold pressed paper and a rough paper, which means that my brush pen skipped around a lot and left nice broken up texture lines. I personally really enjoy a dry brushed look, meaning not all of my lines are clean and smooth and perfect, but that would be something worth being aware of if you prefer a clean, crisp look. Intentionally, I used some Sennelier paints I'm very familiar with and which you may recognize from my dice roll palette video. Sennelier paints are great for layering, they lift and blend super well, and they don't bloom an excessive amount, meaning that they do move well when worked wet on wet, but they don't shoot across the page uncontrollably. I've learned the hard way that it's better to only test one new variable when working with unknown materials, because that's how you'll really be able to understand the results. Which is how I was able to recognize one very crucial flaw of this paper. You cannot lift at all once the paint is fully dried. I have a theory about why that is, but I'm not sure if it's accurate at all. You see, while this paper is wet, it blends pretty well, but I've also noticed that it takes a good long while to completely and truly fully dry, which can be an advantage if you know that's a feature. But once the paper is fully dried, it ain't budging at all. I first noticed it while trying to clean up some areas where I'd gotten a little sloppy, and even though those areas weren't entirely dry, I wasn't able to lift any of the extra pigment. Curious, I decided to clean up a gap at the bottom of the person's cheek where I just hadn't managed to get any color at all. Normally, I should be able to add some water to the edge and feather it out a bit so that the pigment moves enough to reach the ink line. No problem. And on any other paper, absolutely, that would have happened. I actually worked on it for a couple of minutes, but that gap never filled at all. It may be hard to see in this footage since it's not a huge area, but I swear it's there and I swear the paint didn't move the way I know for a fact it would on any other paper. So here's my theory. I theorize that this paper is, in fact, 300 GSM and 100% cotton, which are features of really high quality watercolor paper that most people would look for. But I also theorize that this paper has absolutely no sizing in or on it at all. What's sizing? Sizing is a gelatin that is added to watercolor paper that essentially helps with the handling of watercolor. It's often both added into the paper pulp itself as well as layered on as a coating of the entire surface after the paper is formed. But how does this work and why does it matter? I've used an analogy before in a different video where I talk about how sizing helps colors be clearer and more true to themselves, so I'll try to explain that again as well as why not having it here would make the paint not respond as expected. First of all, if the paper you're using has that gelatin layer of sizing on its surface, that means that the paint isn't absorbing directly into the paper itself so much as on a nearly invisible layer of clear gel on top of the paper. Absolutely, some of your pigment is going to make its way down to the actual paper fibers themselves, but think about the difference between dulling down a color with white versus using it on a clear surface. If your paint is mixing directly with the paper itself, then it may as well be like you're mixing in a bit of white with your paint and dulling down the color a bit. But if you're painting on a surface that has that clear layer of sizing on it, then it's almost like you've painted a clean and pure sheet of color on a piece of glass and are just using the white paper beneath to make it less transparent, but still beautifully clean and clear. Does that make sense? If you've ever made some jello, then you may be aware that it can melt and reform and melt and reform and so on and so forth. So consider this. If your paint pigment is mixed in with that clear layer of gelatin, then when you're re-wetting it and making it liquid again, then it's able to move, which means that any color in it also would be able to move. So, 
Given that I was completely unable to lift or blend any paint after it was dried, plus just a general instinctive sense after having used a ton of different brands of paper, I suspect this is completely unsized. And for me, that's not ideal. It's pretty inexpensive and I'm actually happy to use it for more stylized portraits of people as I see fit, but I'm definitely not going to be able to use it for anything more detailed or serious because even just the minor ability to slightly shift around some color has become important to my technique. If it's not a big deal to you, then by all means, this is actually a decent find. But based on my own experiences, I actually do have an alternative recommendation. Fluid watercolor paper is fairly well known for being affordable, and I've personally used their papers on this channel before. Most notably, I used a pre-cut sheet of 100% cotton watercolor paper from Fluid to paint a picture of some raccoons for the Animal Artist Collective, a video which I'll make sure to link in the iCards. Fluid also makes blocks of their papers, including the cotton paper. I'll do my best to bring you a full review of it at some later point, but for now, let me say that I'd be far more enthusiastic recommending Fluid over Meaden in the paper category, especially because, in this case, the Fluid paper is actually surprisingly less expensive. I've linked it down in the doobly-doo as well. If you've got a favorite brand of inexpensive paper, especially if it's the fancy schmancy cotton type, let us know down below. I'm personally a fan of both Fluid and B paper as far as really easily accessible and affordable brands go. But I also definitely love the Kilimanjaro line from CheapJoes.com, which is rumored to be exactly the same as Saunders Waterford paper, which I've never tried before so can neither confirm nor deny. Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and paper that doesn't break the bank.